Hi everybody, welcome back to us up here at the house again. A uh, little bit housebound still, but uh, never mind, we'll muddle through. Today I'm going to share with you a first in a two-part series on the updates to my LED lighting project, which I shared with you last year. Um, it's going to be in two parts because first of all I want to share with you something else that I've made today, which we're going to look at in a moment. And then the second part is going to look about how we actually fit it all into the caravan and into the awning. Uh, specifically the wiring diagrams, how it's all going to work and I've also got a couple of additions to the whole project as well which make it a really excellent installation into the awning. So today we're going to concentrate on a new project which I've been building, something that you can all make, something that's ridiculously cheap and easy and very very customizable so you can make it yourself and uh, configure it to however you want. So let's go and have a look at what we've made and uh, I'll show you through how we make it. Okay guys, so this is the project that we're going to build today. Now you may think to yourself, what on earth is that? Well, admittedly it looks a bit messy at the moment. This is my prototype. But once you plug it in, it lights up beautifully. And it's made in such a way that it fits inside a normal lampshade. But I bought this from the uh, DIY store. And as you can see, my lamp here, which I've made up, fits inside brilliantly. And it then now means that I've got a really lovely hanging light, which I can now hang up in the awning. Now they're stupidly easy to make. I'm using leftover LEDs from my other LED project. And I'm also using some of the uh, conduit and the trunking pipe, which we used up on the last project for the cable tidies. Link to both of those videos are down in the description. So what do we need to do to make one of these? Well, it's very simple. We're using some LED strips. Let me switch it off. The LED strips and we're coiling it around a bit of pipe work here and I've put some dowels in the top here so that we can hang it and I'm going to make one of these now because uh, Thomas wants one of these for his tent. So first of all what we need to do is we need to cut down some of this pipe work. So what I've done is I've marked and measured out a 100 mil piece of 21 mil pipe which is the same stuff we used for our cable tidies uh, which you've seen before and I've marked this out at 100 mil length. Now I've cut this on a mitre saw which gives me a really nice straight cut. Obviously you can use anything you've got uh, to cut it with but the only problem with cutting it with a, a mitre saw or any saw is it makes it very mucky at the ends. So the first job once we've cut it down is just to use a little bit of emery cloth or wet and dry and just clean up the edges. Now obviously the length of this and uh, the, the where we put our holes now is very much dependent on your lampshade. As you've already seen, this one here is the lampshade I'm going to use. And this is just short enough so it doesn't hang out the bottom of the lampshade, but also gives me enough gap at the top, which I think you can just about see there. Gives me enough gap at the top there to allow me to put some fixings into this. Now the fixings we're gonna use are just some very simple cocktail sticks like so. So there's a number of holes we need to mark off. First of all at 10 mil down we're going to mark a line of where we're going to put the first set of holes. So there we go I think you can see there now you can see they're all lined up in the middle there. And we're just going to trim down the outsides now of these cocktail sticks so that it then fits neatly into our lampshade. Now what we're going to do to fix this eventually is we're going to put some nice hot glue into this and in actual fact what we're going to do is we're going to mount this and glue it from the other side so that when we hang it um, we're not pulling against the glue we're pulling against the actual fixings itself. So now we've got those holes situated and we're happy that we'll put those in place. There is another couple of holes that we need to put in and those holes are for hanging and what we're going to do is we're going to put those at 5 mil in from the edge so about there we've now got the extra holes drilled now for the fixing there's one more hole we need to put in but we don't need to do that one just yet what we need to do now is work out exactly where the LEDs are going to go we can see that we don't want our LEDs to interfere with this bracket so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the pen, and I'm just going to mark down a line of some description 
just about there and I can see now that I don't want my LEDs being any higher than that line there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a line in using a knife and you'll see the reason why in a moment. So what I'm doing is I'm just rotating it around so I can physically see that line quite clearly. Now the reason I'm doing that is because we need to clean this pipe up quite vigorously now. You see in the manufacturing process of making this pipe work, there's actually quite a lot of grease that comes onto this. And that means our LEDs, when we come to stick them onto this pipe, they won't adhere. So what we need to do is give it a really good wash and also we're going to attack the surface using our 600 grit wet and dry paper which we've already used to clean up the edges. So let's go and give this a really good clean and give it uh, a bit of a buffing up with the, uh, the 600 grit wet and dry. So now we've got it nice and clean we need now to start thinking about our LEDs. Now again, we're using exactly the same LEDs that we used last time. We're using uh, the 3528 waterproof LEDs and uh, we're going to use them in exactly the same way as we did before. Now I'm going to use a soldering iron, but one of the questions I had from the last video was what if you can't do any soldering or what if you haven't got a soldering iron? Well, don't worry, because the manufacturers of these LED strips have thought about that. And you can buy leads like this, which literally clamp straight onto the LED strips. So what you'll find is once you've prepared the edge of the LEDs, which we're going to do in a moment, you can literally push this onto the end, close the cap over, and there you go. You've then got an electrical connection. And then that will plug into a normal power outlet a like so so if you can't solder or you don't have access to a soldering iron don't worry there is a way to do it without having to uh, to invest in all of that equipment so what we're going to do now is we're going to prepare our end of the leds ready for soldering and we're actually going to put a bit of solder on the end as well and then we'll start wrapping it up onto our pipe like so Right, now then, so the LEDs are now prepared, we're all ready to start wrapping. Now I found out in the prototype that this tube here, being 100mm long and using, oh, how much space are we actually using? We are using up uh, about 80mm of space. I found that using up that amount there means that we use about 36 uh, LEDs. Now I'll tell you how many LEDs we're actually going to use up on this one. So this is a good project for using up odd amounts of LEDs left over from other projects, for instance. And you'll notice that, I'll show you the prototype here again, the prototype here, the LEDs don't line up. So they never come down straight. They sort of curve, as, as you can see there. They curve as they go around, which is great actually, because what that means is you're going to get light all the way around. You're not going to get stripes of it. That was more luck than judgment, I'll be honest with you. Now the point is, is what we want to do is we're going to put the LEDs down on the track, down on the, the tube here. But what we don't want to happen is we don't want to interfere with any of the holes across the top because we need to put another hole in here in a minute so that we can get the cable in. So what I do is I go halfway between our two points there and that should be fine. Now if you find that it's not sticking down, and I'll be honest with you, on the prototype it wasn't sticking down, don't panic. You may need to use a little bit of super glue, and I think I'm going to need it again for this one. So what we're doing now is we're just wrapping the LEDs around like so, trying to make fairly tight coils as we carry on down and keeping it even as we coil away. So I've just had to use a little bit of glue on this just to make sure it sticks down. Um, specifically the edges, that's where you want to really focus on. So what I've done is I've just put a bit of glue down and I'm just rolling it now just to make sure that everything is nicely stuck in place. 
So we need to put a hole just in front of the actual LEDs where we prepared our ends. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a hole just about there. Now obviously if we're going to use a cable like this, that's not going to fit through a small hole, is it? So what in my, I would do in that case is I would physically fit this on first, like so, and then bring the cable up to the top. But we're not going to do that. We're using a soldering iron today. So what I'm going to do is drill a little pilot hole all the way through. So now it's a case of just preparing our cable and this is the one I've got here and this is a leftover from the wiring loom that I've made up for the strip lights. So what I'm going to do now is prepare the cable ends and tin these up ready for soldering. And then this will then feed through from the inside and pop through the hole that we've just made like so and we'll pull it through and we'll then solder it onto our cables there and there we go that's the wire connected now let's give it a good old test make sure it's working and there we are it's all beautifully lit up so the only thing I would say is if you have got access to it put a little bit of hot glue across the terminals there and that will protect it beautifully and also make it sure it's weatherproof as well. Now what we've got to do is fix our dowels back into place and we'll put them in and we'll glue them in this time as well. Okay, so we're onto the final stretch now. I've just let it dry for a bit and as you can see now it's all nice and solid, which is great. Uh, if you so want to, you can now go ahead and paint this outside here now and make it sort of a dark color or even just paint it all white. Um, purely up to you. I'm going to leave it as is because of where it's going to be going. The final stretch now is just to hang it up and what I've got here is I've got some uh, some cord. This is marine uh, twine which is a very thin cord, uh, incredibly strong and it's got this weird uh, tar-like coating on it as well. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic to use, um, very handy to have around. And what I've got on this cord also is I've got a little toggle here as well and the idea of this is that I can then use this to either hang up over a awning pole or uh, hang it over something else and then just tension it up by putting the, the toggle closer up like so. So that's just the idea um, of that. So all I'm going to do is just make one knot off on this end. So there we go, I've now um, shortened the, co the uh, cord down quite a bit and what you can see as well, I've just put the plug and I've wrapped it around the cord as well so there's no tension and there's no pull on the actual plug itself. Right, final step, now what we're going to do is just going to glue the light in here. Obviously this is our lampshade here and we're not going to glue it from the top here, we're going to glue it from the underneath. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to use the glue gun and I'm just going to put a nice amount of glue now on that ring. Here's a top tip, I'm going to use a pint glass. I'm going to, as you've seen, I've wrapped up all the cabling already. And all I'm going to do is just pass all of that through and then put it in the pint glass, like so. And then I can then align the, the actual bulb so it's nicely in the center. And there we go, there's a jury rigged up in the kitchen at the moment, as you can see the cables are all over the place, but we just hung it from um, our spotlights in the kitchen there. But I think you can see now the general idea of it, the brightness of it, and as you can see inside, you can see the lights and how they're working. But actually that's not too bad, brightness level wise. It's, uh, it's ambient, it's not going to be a spotlight, it's going to be attractive to have over the table in the awning I think. 
And there we go, guys. I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, it's certainly something that's very easy to do, uh, very quick and simple to uh, make them. And uh, like I said before, they're very customizable, so you can make them and uh, apply them to any lampshade that you like the look of. Um, I'm going to play around with the configuration of ours, but I want to make sure that it's not too low. So I think the string which I have on it, to be honest with you, is going to be a bit too long. But when it's in the awning, um, in our next trip away, I'll share with you how it's actually going to look and where it's actually going to be in the awning itself. So I think it'll look uh, really good. Now in the second part, I'm going to share with you that installation and the strip LEDs which we made last year. And I'm going to share with you how the wiring loom all hangs together. And I'm also going to share with you uh, a couple of other things as well. So keep on the lookout for that. Uh, it will be out in the coming days. Any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, until the next one, guys, we'll speak to you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.